Okay, having seen Shannon's law now and found an equation for the channel capacity and a version of the channel capacity, which is a function of EB over N0, we're now ready to take a deep dive into what we call the spectral efficiency plane. Once again, this is covered in chapter 9 of our textbook from Sklar. So the spectral efficiency plane is a way that we can visualize the trade-offs made with spectral efficiency. It's a visualization of Shannon's limit about the channel capacity. But we can also add to that a way to visualize the symbol error rate as well. So I'm going to try and show you how all of these can sort of be uh, conveyed into this very simple spectral efficiency plane. So this again is the EB over N0 on the x-axis. We have the spectral efficiency R divided by W on the y-axis. And the curve here is, of course, the uh, limit for the capacity. So anything on this side would be an R, which is unattainable. This line is when R is equal to C. And anything here is an attainable system, something that's realizable, that, that does not violate Shannon's law. And again, I remind you, um, that, so we went over the x and the y axes and that along this curve of spectral efficiency, uh, the, of channel, uh, channel capacity curve, that in one, as we go down the curve in this direction, this is really, really poor spectral efficiency. I'm sending very little information and taking a whole lot of bandwidth in order to do it. Now as I go along the curve in the other direction is where I'm getting maximizing the spectral efficiency, that I'm sending a whole lot of information and in not too much bandwidth. Now, you'll notice that this curve uh, sort of kinks, and that is, again, because of a change of scale. So we change the scale here just so that we can highlight uh, and easily view this uh, limit of minus 1.6 dB as being the lowest, the asymptote here, uh, that this Shannon capacity approaches as being the um, uh, lowest EB over N0, which will still permit reliable communications albeit uh, with a whole lot of um, bandwidth being used. So I'd like to populate, I said I'd like to also make this a visualization of symbol error rate. So I'm going to start with an orthogonal MRE system, in this case of course FSK would be the example we've seen so far, but it's really a, a general equation that would apply to any orthogonal modulation format. And this is the plot, and of course we had k equal 1, so this is binary FSK, and as we get to more and more k, we can see that the curves are getting better, you know, getting closer to the origin. And we had this limit marked here, which maybe I didn't explain earlier, but this limit is at minus 1.6 dB, and that's where k equals infinity. So this is one way we can see where, where that limit sort of is coming from. I mean, here already we're at k equal 20, but imagine that we kept making it larger and larger. You can see that it's becoming, of course, I have to use more and more bandwidth when I increase uh, the k, but I can see that my, my performance is getting better, and the original question we wanted to answer, is there a limit? The channel capacity says, yes, there is a limit. You can make this k or the m as big as you want, but you can't go beyond this. You're never going to be able to get reliable communications below this level but still it's pretty low level, so that's a pretty good way of, of working in a power limited system. Now suppose I set a certain level of performance that I'm interested in, and down here it's 10 to the minus 5. So I look at the curves for different k, and I say, okay, equal 2, that's this uh, EB over N0 that's necessary to achieve 10 to the minus 5. Here for uh, k equal 2, m equal 4, there's another uh, EB over at zero, and you can see that uh, to attain 10 to the minus 5, I need less and less EB over at zero, and, and I can take these numbers and use these to plot them on the spectral efficiency plane. So if I look uh, down in this region, you'll see M equal 4, M equal 2, M equal 4, M equal 8, M equal 16, and they're little, um, I can't t quite think they're squares. <laughs> Anyway, this is, this is the non-coherent orthogonal MPSK. So we take the performance here, curves for non-coherent, 
and we look up the spectral efficiency and we plot a point. So remember, every point on this curve is an ordered pair of EB over N0 and the spectral efficiency of R over W. Every point on this plane is an ordered pair. So if I take this ordered pair, which is M16, M equals 16, then on the EB over N0, it would be I would take the curve, the point here, what EB over N0 did I need to get 10 to the minus 5 for M equals 16, and it'll give me a certain number here. And then I'll look up, okay, now what is the equation for the spectral efficiency for non-coherent? It's a uh, log 2 over M. M, log 2m over m, and that would give me this number. And so uh, every point on this bandwidth efficiency plane uh, has an EB over N0 and a spectral efficiency. So that's a way for us to take those two bits of, those two information, qu these two quantities of information we had. One was the, uh, er the probability of error performance, one was the spectral efficiency performance, and be able to plot them on one plot. So these points here are the collection of points that uh, refer to non-coherent FSK. And we can see that as it's getting larger, of course, we know that we're getting less uh, EB over N0 required. And we also know that the spectral efficiency is going down. So this gives us that trend. Now I could do the same thing for MPSK. MPSK, here I've plotted uh, BPSK, QPSK, uh, 8, 16, 32, 64. And of course, I need, if I look at 10 to the minus 5, I can look at what uh, EB over N0 I need. And as M is increasing, I'm needing more and more EB over N0. So now I can take that, and we can see the points for uh, PSK um, added uh, up here. So here we can see that we've taken the EB over N0 that I get from these plots for each one. So this is m equal 4, m equal 8, 16, 64. And then I use my equation for the spectral efficiency, which is log 2m. And we can see how it's uh, going up uh, as, as we do the trade-off. So we've got this ordered pair of required EB over N0. And then from the spectral efficiency, uh, uh, the other coordinate for y. So this has been for PSK, coherent detection. And the last one would be for QAM. And so I can take uh, the QAM curves, do something similar, and then I have these triangle uh, points which are, which are up here. Colors aren't coming out so good. But this is really in blue what I call the bandwidth limited systems. And then in red, this is what I call, excuse me, this is the power limited systems. These are the bandwidth limited systems. So if I have limited bandwidth and it's really important that I'm in a range where the spectral efficiency is high, I'm going to look for solutions here. Whereas if I'm in a region where spectral efficiency not so important, I got lots of bandwidth, but I don't have much power, and so I'm really operating in the low power regime, then I'm going to look for solutions here. And where exactly I need to find my solutions just depends on where exactly these points, uh, you know, what my, what my constraints are. So I could fix a constraint on you know, I only have this much um, power, so I'm going to look for everything on this side. And then I'm going to look at how much bandwidth I have. And so this gives you a way to help you try to find the correct modulation for a bat uh, when you have a certain situation, which could be defined by these parameters. I mentioned also that uh, this was picked, uh, these points were selected in order to have um, a certain uh, bit error rate, probability uh, bit error rate of 10 to the minus 5, I believe, and that um, in, I if I were to do um, uh, different values instead of 10 to the minus 5, that I would have different points. Okay, so, so it depends on the parameterization you choose for the spectral efficiency plane. Here are a couple of quick examples of the kinds of questions that could be asked on an exam. Uh, about the spectral efficiency plane. Um, for instance, we could change the probability of error, say that it's 10 to the minus 6 instead of 10 to the minus 5, and ask for two modulation formats to find a new one. So of course the spectral efficiency would not change, but the coordinate in EB over N0 would change because I have a different probability. Or uh, could ask about a modulation format we haven't seen before. So I say there's some 
modulation system. And I tell you that the spectral efficiency is the same as MPSK. So, okay, I know it's log 2M. But then I say that the penalty vis-a-vis -vis QPSK is a certain number. So I don't give you an equation, but I do give you the penalty uh, with reference to QPSK. So with this information on the spectral efficiency and on the EB over N0, you should be able to find a coordinate and place each of these modulation formats also on the spectral efficiency plane.